I have thieves in my garden. Let's do something about it. All right, guys, so here's what's going on. We are having trouble with thieves on our place, but they are not the two-legged kind. They're the four-legged kind, and we're going to see if we can do something about it. We're up here at the garden, and what happens is our corn starts coming up every year. Had a especially bad problem with this last year. The corn got up. Beautiful, beautiful corn. As soon as the ears got ready, the raccoons just invaded it and just decimated our corn crop. We still got a fair crop but not nearly as much as we should have so i've got something here that i believe is going to fix our problems i've got a solar powered fence charger from tractor supply this is a tractor supply special and it is a 10 mile fence charger i didn't need 10 miles of course but i wanted to get one that was sufficient enough and strong enough to keep the raccoons at bay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this out in the sun for a while and we're gonna go ahead and set this up and then we're gonna put the fence around the garden and I'm hoping that is gonna stop our raccoon issue up here. So we'll put our uh, fence charger on this post right here on the very top of this particular post and I believe you're supposed to, well, Google, Google says you're supposed to face it due south in the Northern Hemisphere, so that's what we're gonna do. Please. Here we go. Pretty simple. So here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do here. I was planning on attaching it directly to these fence posts, but I saw somewhere on YouTube or Google or wherever that somebody was suggesting putting them out just a little ways and that really makes more sense. I feel like if I've got one strand or two strands right here, somehow that's just too close and they would be able to climb over or climb up this fence. I don't know. They're really clever little animals and they're very difficult to deal with. So what I'm thinking, I've got these little standers right here and I'm going to take them and I'm going to put them about six inches or so out from these posts from the fence drive them in and then put two strands up on this two strands of electric fence up on this i'm really afraid of course that seems a little bit short i'm really afraid that if i put just one strand here they would be able to just kind of jump over it and get on this fence um feel like if I put two, that's going to that's gonna increase my chances of success here. Although I'm really afraid this is a little bit too short. I'm not so sure about this. Let me, let me take another look at this. So I did some quick research, and I think what we're going to do is continue with our plan. We're going to go eight inches out from the fence, and then we'll put two wires on this little piece of rebar, this little stander here. And got a little cheater here to see how far I need to go. And that should be good. I'll put one piece or one strand about right here. That should prevent them from getting under. And one right here should be able to prevent them from crawling over as well. So yeah, let's keep going. I think we'll be okay here. Alright, so this is going to be the last one 
of these little standers here. And then we'll put a couple of insulators on these wooden posts. Oh, I think I hit a rock. Did hit a rock. Okay, so this right here is going to give us the ability to put a uh, strand about 10 inches high. This is roughly 10 inches, I think, and the ability to put one maybe about 5 inches high. So I really, I'm not going to say I think it will because raccoons are so clever, but I'm desperately hoping this will keep them out. So I'll put some ceramic insulators on these fence posts here, and uh, the reason I'm doing this instead of uh, you know, another stander right here is because I'm going to have the, I'm not even sure what they're called, I'm going to have to have the ability to um, take the electric fence away when I want to go into the gate here, of course. So that's the reason that we're doing this, so we'll have a little more stability when we pull this fence away going into the garden so we can open the gate. That is a hard fence. Oh, I broke my insulator. I didn't mean to do that. It's still together though, so we'll make it work. So I'm ready to put the ground rods in, but I'm actually gonna move this mount over to the other side of this post, and I'll show you why once we get there. So by putting it on the other side of this post, I'm going to be able to run my wires straight down the outside of this post instead of having to uh, kind of thread them between the wires and uh, kind of make a mess out of things on the inside of the post. So this is going to work much better over here. Hey buddy, can you give us a garden tour? Cheese. <laughs> we don't have cheese growing. Where's mommy's tomatoes? I know. Why are they? What kind of tomatoes are these? Tomatoes. What kind? Tomatoes. Daddy, daddy's tomatoes. Daddy's tomatoes, okay. <laughs> Say, we've got Roma. Roma tomatoes? There's lots of Roma tomatoes. Can you show them the Roma tomatoes? Look. Or not. <laughs> He's done. Hey, where's the corn? Where's the corn at? That's field. The corn's in the field. No, the soybeans are in the field. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and put in our ground rods. And no, these are not proper ground rods, but they are what I've got laying around. They're galvanized, and I'm pretty sure they'll be okay. What they lack in depth, and uh, well, I guess lack, what they'll lack in going down deep enough, they, it should be made up by the fact that the garden gets watered pretty frequently. So the ground is gonna be very, very moist, and uh, so I think they should be fine.
The instructions actually say to put three, uh, of course, proper ground rods out. Uh, I'm going to put three of these out. The third thing that I have is actually a galvanized pipe, but I think with the moisture content here, because the garden gets watered constantly, and the fact that there are three of these, I really think that would be more than sufficient. All right, so let's go ahead and get our ground hooked up here and then we'll come back and do the hot side. All right, so let's do the hot. I'm gonna leave the camera, and of course the tripod's not quite tall enough to do this. I'm gonna leave this solar charger up here on the top, but I think y'all will pretty well get the picture and understand what's going on. Just the same exact thing we did with the ground. Now let's run our line.
So guys, we're back around at the fence post here and there's a, a problem here that I kind of predicted that I would have, but the problem is this fence kind of sticks out some. That's gonna make this wire short out and not work. So I figured I'd have this issue, so I brought some staples with me. I'm just gonna staple this onto the fence and uh, try to get it out, I'm sorry, onto the fence post, and that should get it out of the way. Let's get a couple of staples here and see if we can get this taken care of. I've never been any good with these staples. I think that'll do it. Yep, so we're clear now. So no big deal. So right here we've got to make a consideration to be able to get into the gate. So I'm going to put a couple of these rubber gate handles right here and that will make it to where we can pull this electric fence out of the way and get into the gate right here. I'm going to cut it right there. I think that's probably too much, but you're better off having extra than not enough. Mm, that's backwards. Just got to go this way. This is kind of spring loaded right here, so we want to kind of make it to where there's a little bit of tension on it. So what I'm going to do is bend it right there where it's supposed to be. And then, ugh, there we go, take it apart and then go back just a little bit more with my bend and I think right there, oops, where's my camera, there we go, I think right there is where we will uh, we'll end up putting the loop there. How many of y'all saw that coming? That was supposed to be in there in the first place, wasn't it? Somebody needs to say something next time. All right, I think that is good. All right, guys, so I cut off the camera and finished up these two loops here. I didn't want to bore y'all with just stringing wire, but that's it. As far as I know, I am not an electrician, but as far as I know, uh, it is wired up and it's wired up properly. So, um, and I really think, I really do think this would keep a raccoon out. We've got a strand right here that's just that far from the bottom. Just kind of, if I spread my fingers out, it's that distance from the bottom. Then there's another one a little bit higher. I honestly don't think a raccoon could get over that. I think if he tries to, you know, reach over and grab this wire right here that's kind of poking out, I think he'll get shocked. Um, I, I don't think I don't think they can get over there. And I think that'll stop other things like rabbits and so forth. And I think I've got it far enough from the fence as well that um, that'll you know, that'll help out as well. But anyway, there's really nothing else to do left to do but to test. And uh, I guess that's what we'll do. So yeah, let's grab my voltmeter and test it. So first there's a switch that has to be turned on on the unit itself. So we'll get that turned on. There's a little sticker on top of it. All right, it's switched on. I hear it doing something. So here's what I hear it doing, guys. It is so close right there to the fence that it's shortened out. Um, yeah, 
it's working. It's working. Let's move that fence out of the way and uh, see if we can test it again. I did turn it off in case anybody was wondering. Well, that kind of spoiled the fun a little bit. Here's the voltmeter I was going to use to test it. Turn it on again and test it. Can y'all hear that? Let's get closer. All right, let's get it to focus here. There we go. Oop. Man, I'm playing a dangerous game trying to get this to focus. <laughs> there, maybe. All right, y'all are just gonna have to listen. I can't get any closer. There. That's probably not the best tester there because it's painted and that's probably insulating a lot of the electricity. All right guys, so today is the next day. I wanted to let this thing charge for a little while so y'all could really get the, uh, get a better effect on how strong this thing is. Let's see if we can get it to spark. Yeah, I don't know if y'all can see that very well, but man, it is loud. So here's our garden this year, and I may do an individual video about this. It seems like when I tell y'all I'm going to do an individual video about something, I don't end up doing it. But uh, anyway, this is our garden this year. This is some stuff that we bought from GrowersSolution.com and this it, well it's just a weed barrier basically and it's basically like a tarp of some sort and it's very very thick and what you do is you burn holes in this if i can find my there we go you burn holes where you want your seed got a little weed right there but you burn holes where you want your seed you put your seed down in there and that seed grows up with well, that plant grows up through that hole and man let me tell you so far this has been absolutely wonderful i mean the whole point of this is to prevent weeds and look at this you can see the weeds that are coming up on the outside of this stuff and then you can see the weeds that are not coming up except every now and then on the inside of this stuff look at this and look at this difference it does hold in moisture pretty well but the flip side of that is that it is um, it's kind of difficult to get moisture in it and most of the time it just gets moisture in it from these holes and from the edges so you have to water it really really well um, the garden needs a lot of work right now the tomatoes have got to have cages this has got to have trellises and uh, we just hopefully we just solved our problem with the raccoons let's go look at our corn down here Here's some squash and zucchini plants right here. Before we get to the corn, these are some sunflowers. My wife loves sunflowers. So I've got her some sunflowers planted. These are, I think this is the row of mammoth sunflowers. There's also some red ones or some kind of a mix in here as well. But there's some sunflowers coming up there. And lots of weeds. Here's some rows of corn small corn plants that are just coming up this is silver king corn i was able to find silver king this year i've been planting silver queen just because we can't find silver king very easily but i managed to find some silver king this year which makes me pretty happy so here's our corn this is the first planting of corn right here and we are having some bug issues here i've been spraying this with prometheur and malathion and this is some kind of a I forgot exactly some kind of a European caterpillar kind of like the thing that gets into the corn earworms um, It's kind of like the thing that is the corn earworms. I guess they're just what they do is they kind of come and eat on the leaves a little bit and Then once the plant starts growing those holes expand more and more with the plant so 
trying to keep that under control and here's our raccoon problem right here see this this is this is what they do i told my dad i said i really wish they would just take the whole garden or none at all instead of three two or three plants per night but they just cut it down and right at the base right here and the only evidence that i have that it's raccoons is that i managed to see a paw print out here so i'm pretty confident that it's raccoons doing this look at that just shoot it off shoot it right off at the base see the chew mark whoops the trouble with this camera y'all see the chew marks there yeah i am hoping that what we just did is going to prevent this but this corn's coming along really well it does need uh, some hoeing out and I'm probably going to work on that tomorrow but desperately hoping that that fence is going to fix a lot of the problems that we have here not sure what's going on with that corn this corn's looking rough but all in all it's doing pretty good very interested to see what it turns into very very much looking forward to tomato sandwiches and corn on the cob and all the all the good stuff that comes out of the garden. Those two are growing too close. There we go. Got some squash and zucchini plants over here that I pointed out. It's a pepper plant, a couple of pepper plants on the end, jalapeno peppers. Got a volunteer potato coming up. I probably just need to yank that up. I need to come and till between these rows as well. It just looks ugly, but man look at the difference look at the difference this is what it would look like and we would be out here fighting and fighting and fighting weeds but but we're not and it's really great the tomatoes got to have cages that's tomorrow's project this is a husky i think husky cherry red and it is really coming along nicely it's got to have a cage also all of these have got to have a cage all right guys well that's probably going to do it for this video i uh, really appreciate y'all watching and I will see y'all on the next one.